everyone. We're here at the Amherst Area Chamber. This is Claudia Pasmani, Executive Director, and this is a continuation of our Fireside Chat series. So welcome. And we are here today with the team, the powerhouse team, behind the beautiful mission of the Bauer Studio here in Amherst, right on the outskirts of our downtown. And we have owners Issa Wang and Vincent Freno. So welcome. Um, I'd love for you to say a little bit about of uh, the Bauer Studio, uh, who you are, what you do? We, we actually started this business back in 2011. So we've been doing this for a while, but we've had like many different kind of iterations of it. Mm -hmm. um, we used to do soap when we first started. And, and then of course we had um, our gift shop and apothecary, and now we're focusing on our plantable seed cards. And so the biodiversity piece comes in because we have illustrations of plants and animals, insects, um, on uh, most of our cards. And in that, we try to highlight the biodiversity um, primarily of North American species. And so biodiversity is basically just the, um, the, the wide range of life that exists. Um, so having many, many different species um, of, of all, you know, all the above, all the different kingdoms of, of life. Wonderful. Do you want to share a little bit about each of your roles right now in this in this business model? Um, yeah, so I kind of handle a lot of the uh, behind the scenes business elements of it. I do the financial bookkeeping part of it um, and some of our wholesale relationship kind of work. Um, and Vincent does a lot of the public facing stuff. Yeah. And so I, I've been handling a lot of our social media and things recently. Which you're um, killing it, by uh, the way. <laughs> I know because, you know, small business, um, the, the, the endless conversation about, you know, having a marketing budget and, you know, for a small business, having marketing is so important. And um, for anyone watching, please follow the Bauer Studio and really pay attention because Vincent does the most beautiful. You do videos, you do, uh, you're, you're on the stories, you're all over it. You're, you're, you've got it down um, and it's beautiful. You're, you're, are you also the artist? Am I correct? Yeah. Like, so, well, I do um, a lot of the the drawings. So they all start as a pen and ink drawing, um, which was one of the the photos I had sent you. Yes. So we're going to be sharing some of that work at the end of this video. Um, and please take a note that. And in, in fact, I'm such a you know junk. I finally ordered for the holidays, and I ended up ordering most for me. <laughs> so I, I may have to go back on and order a few more gifts, but. Um, so when I met you, you joined the chamber probably about a year ago, and it was pre-COVID. I came over to the shop. I had, I wanted a tincture. You were so helpful. Um, you know, there is, there's a beautiful rapport. It's a tiny store, so it's quickly very intimate. You know, you have, you, you had beautiful crafts from different um, local um, vendors, um, you know, and I see you giving a lot of shout outs on your social media to a lot of them, you know, a lot of partners. Um, so talk a little bit about like a year ago, what that was like, and then let's talk about like that transition to now, you know, so a year ago it was a really different, you know, different idea and concept for your store. Yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah, so I'd say like in September of 2019, we moved from our house had like an attached commercial space to it in Pelham on Route 202. So we had been operating our store out of there since 2015. Um, and then we decided to make the big move into Amherst just to be part of the downtown, uh, be more connected to the community and just make it easier for people to find us and get to us. Uh, so we opened our retail arm of it in September of last year. And it was a retail boutique store, but then also an herbal apothecary. Um, so that was also a shift where, as in the Pelham space, we had a larger space. We were able to do a lot of workshops and things. And here we had to really consolidate our offerings and stream mm -hmm. them, make sure that, you know, we were just providing the things that people were really interested in coming back for repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we kind of really focused on the apothecary part more so once we moved to Amherst. Um, and that had been really good for us. There's not a lot of resources in the area to buy dried herbs. Uh, mm -hmm. so a lot of people 
people coming in who were appreciative of us being here. Mm-hmm. Good, yeah. It was really nice for that whole year. Yeah. Yeah. And then what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so then when COVID happened, we thought about it and our space is not very big. I'd say it's like 750 square feet or so. Mm-hmm. It's it's not super big, uh, tight space. So we could only realistically have maybe four customers in at a time if all of the windows were open and we had mm-hmm. one there. Only one employee. <laughs> and only one employee, right. Um, so we decided that we would, we had been thinking about separating our greeting card business from the retail brick and mortar business anyways, mm-hmm. hoping that someone would be able to just take over the retail business for us, like mm-hmm. purchase or transfer of ownership somehow. Um, but that just didn't pan out. So we ended up just converting this space to our studio to I focus see. on our greeting card business. Mm-hmm. And it was the retail storefront. It just didn't seem feasible anymore mm-hmm. so you were getting enough orders on your print side yeah yeah so we were doing um in the beginning we were selling our cards retail and wholesale just online and at craft mm-hmm. but within the last year and a half or so our wholesale really picked up that's so exciting we, yeah we've been mostly able to switch over completely to selling our cards wholesale to other retailers around the country. Mm-hmm. We have a visitor. We have a family. Do we have another family member in the room? Yes. Yes, yeah, this basil. is Basil. <laughs> oh, I love, of course it's Basil. <laughs> it had to be an herb, right? <laughs> How fitting. Nice to meet you, Basil. Oh, what a cutie. I know. I feel like I feel like my dog has done many cameos during COVID. So welcome, Basil. Thank you. So, what kind of things did you avail yourselves of during this process? Because you had to close your storefront, essentially. Um, you know. So, and as you said, you had a lot of. I know you had a store sale at one point. You know, yeah. sort of a a closing sale, trying to getting rid of items. But you did it beautifully. Um, but talk a little bit about you know what you took it, how you made that transition. Um, and also what you availed yourself of during that time. For example, PPP, you know, that kind of stuff. What what buoyed you to keep going? Yeah, we definitely had um, assistance from the microgrant from the Downtown Business Foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, that really helped us get through that initial period of complete shutdown when we just weren't open to the public. We were still trying to figure out what the guidelines were. Um, and, and still trying to keep the shop going. <laughs> yeah, and trying to keep us afloat. So you had a lot of inventory, right? You had inventory. Had a lot of inventory. Um, and at first, we were just trying to have everybody work online. So we had two employees, um, and we were just trying to do whatever we could online, maybe with like social media, um, and working from home. But then eventually, when it was safe enough, we came back to the store. Uh, and had a closing sale, which worked out really nicely. Um, luckily, the weather was really nice, so we were able to put stuff outside and have people, you know, wait outside and come in in different groups, and really be able to control the traffic that was coming through and do it safely. Thankfully, nice weather. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That was a, a better time for sure. So, tell us a little bit about what you're selling now. These beautiful prints and cards that you do. So right now we're doing um, the uh, plantable seed cards are kind of what we focus on. And so um, for uh, anyone who doesn't know, um, the, the plantable part of it is because the, the paper that we use, and I, actually I should have grabbed one, um, the paper we use has seeds embedded in the paper. And right. that way, when you send a card to someone, um, that person can then choose to plant the card instead of having to like, you know, chuck it into the recycling bin or the landfill or something like most It's cards. such a beautiful idea and concept. And for any of us who have huge gardeners in our families, um, you know, this is like the most special gift, I think, right? Um, I hate to see your designs go under, but <laughs> but they really are beautiful. Um, you have a bee collection right now. I'm like a, this arbiter of bees, I love bees, but um, so you have them in cards as the plantable seed cards, but you also have prints. Yeah, and and so Issa grabbed the, 
the cards um, and the you ball. can't really see too well, but there's like kind of a texture to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, most of our designs on the cards we also offer as prints. Um, and then we also have like little um, button pins. Mm -hmm. uh, We've really pared down our offering. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we have, you know, scarves, even bags. So why the scarves? I ordered the scarf. There was one of the scarves. I was like, I love these scarves. Um, and I think I'm going to order another one. But the scarves are kind of neat because they have sort of um, the same kind of theme, right? You pick something that has sort of yeah. herb, herbal or natural theme. Yeah, so the fabric is um, our designs printed on it. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So at that time, we were looking for just different product offerings to incorporate our illustrations on. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of craft shows, so it was like more conducive to people trying it on and seeing mm -hmm. it. So now that you know we're switching to a more wholesale-based model and a lot of e-commerce, we're just trying to streamline our products, but mm -hmm. then create more depth with our uh, designs. Right, so now right. Your range of designs to pick from, but a smaller range of actual products. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. So I did not realize that those are your designs as well. Now, Vincent, is that your drawing as well? Some of those designs or? Yeah. So, and so I do most of the pen and ink and then um, Issa does a lot of the, the color and. Um, I see. We actually. Perfect team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. That is amazing. It's really beautiful. Um, I, I just, I think what your story is, is like such local talent. Um, and so you've been at this since 2011, right? So this is nine years. So where do you see yourself in a year? You know, we're, we're kind of coming into some tough months. And um, I really wanted to highlight our local businesses to kind of let people know, like, these are, we have some amazing makers here. <laughs> um, and um, business owners who are really invested in their businesses right now you know, uh, 110%. And so, you know, the I, as much as I wanted us all to be in front of a fire, <laughs> uh, that cozy chat, we're gonna have to do it via, via we're next to each other in Zoom. <laughs> but, you know, you know, tell me, like, what are you thinking? I guess we're all so worried about these next few months. How do you feel has been the low, you know, the support? And also where do you see yourself now in the next year, you know, coming out of this? What are you thinking? Because you, you have had a few iterations and you're both really, super creative clearly so i'm curious um i think so far focusing on the studio part has been actually a huge relief for us because we felt like we were juggling two pretty disparate businesses and mm -hmm. trying to do both of them at the same time didn't allow either one to grow yeah. really we just really had a stalemate with those and pre mm -hmm. they were both doing like looking like they were going uh, right. So. They were both growing, but they were both being held back because we were splitting our time and our energy and brain space between the two. Mm -hmm. um, focusing on the studio and our cards has been really nice to just like streamline our process and train our employees to just be able to focus on that. What I'd really like to do is be able to uh, collaborate with more people because when we had the retail space, we would do the Amherst Art Night. Mm -hmm. And that, and also we were carrying work from local artists in our store, mm -hmm. and we sort of missed that component of really being able to collaborate and work with local artists and business craft. Right, right. And a little birdie might tell me that yeah, bet you could still do that even give if you have that studio space. You know, when we can all reopen, um, that may still be a possibility to be as you know you have this, the wall space right and the space to be because it could be. I mean, we've had artists with various um types of media you know participate uh so your space is the perfect space for sure so hopefully we can make that happen <laughs> i know a few people <laughs> but hopefully we can make that happen no no it's really it's really exciting so um so so far you're feeling confident it's feeling good and i think what you're talking about is really honing in on the one thing you, you kind of honed in on what you're really good at and what you excelled at and said, okay, let's focus on this product, make it the best possible product. Um, and then hopefully you can grow from there when the time is right. And some other things were, I mean, we, I will say that our retail side has gone down quite a bit since COVID. Um, mm -hmm. which, you know, a lot of folks are, are struggling right now. Right. Um, and so that- By what percentage would you say? Uh, gosh. I would say like maybe 30% down. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Um, 
which is stronger than a lot of people. So, <laughs> I mean, it's terrible, but it's, you know, um, you know, it's uh, hopefully we're all going to come back from this. You know, that's, you know, as a chamber, we're also looking to, you know, what part of this conversation is, you know, how can we help? Um, how have we helped? How can we help? You know, uh, we constantly try to promote business, but, um, you know, what, what are you looking for in a, as a partner as you move forward? Um, well, I will say that the chamber has been really amazing um, with with offering help. Um, just you know, I've been getting the emails and so forth, um, just the the newsletters, and just seeing what y'all are doing, and the help that you've offered us has been um, fantastic. Um, so you know, I think things like this is really helpful for us, especially for letting folks know that we're we're still here. Um, a lot of folks, when we closed our um, shop gift shop and apothecary. Um, thought that we were completely out of business entirely. Um, and so I, I think there was a little bit of confusion with that. And so it would be nice, um, you know, through things like this to try and be like, hey, we're still here. You're still and here. I have to say I was guilty of that. So what would you have done differently? Or what could we tell somebody who's transitioning their business a little bit? Because it is a little tricky, right? Um, some people might close for a week or two. To, we've had some folks like redo their, their system, redo their website, or, you know, uh, focus on something. So they may close for a little bit. Um, what would you tell people like, as a business, you know, because again, we're still in these transitions and that may happen again for someone else that they may have to close or, you know, while they're shifting. Yeah. I think social media has been a huge mm -hmm. thing and our, not just social media, but like our mailing list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we built that up pre COVID. We had a way of communicating with our customers through mm -hmm. all. Um, and that has helped clarify a lot, you know, just keep posting, keep in mm -hmm. communication with people. Mm -hmm. that way we're able to find out if people are confused yeah reach out to right. them you know we're still here you can find our products right here yeah um, that's keeping communication online as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well that was the other I, it was actually one of the other drivers for me in terms of really wanting to highlight you all because i think that um it's just it's such a beautiful business. You're, you're, you guys are hyper local. <laughs> it's hyper local. And, um, you know, I feel like this is exactly what we talk about when we say support local, so, you know, shop local all season long, um, all year long. You know, I think that it's really easy to go to, you know, our, a Marshalls or, a, you know, to and buy some bulk cards, right? Um, you know, these cards have meaning. They, someone actually locally designed them. They're made with you know, real intention in mind as well. So, um, and to me, it's giving a gift is 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 an intentional thing, right? So, um, I feel like when when you support local, you're really being intentional. And so, um, I thank you for your time today. So, is there anything else you'd like to share about the Bauer Studio before, uh, or that we haven't talked about that you'd like everyone to know? Well, I'd like to share really quick that if folks don't feel comfortable shopping online for any reason. Um, we have uh, one local store right now that's carrying our cards, um, and that's the Assembled and Made in Northampton, located in Thorns. And I believe that they are open um, by appointment or just certain hours. So mm -hmm. you know, I shop there and find our cards there, too. I did see an email go out, and it is they're, they're, they're really um, promoting to try to go by appointment only because of now capacity issues, yes. right? So, but to call to call for an appointment to go yeah. in. Okay, it's called Assemble. Yes. Okay. Um, I know. I I don't know that I know that name of that store. So, <laughs> see, we're all learning something. So this is good. It's all learning for all of us. Well, I think especially for us, we've all been hunkered down. Uh, we are partners in tourism with the chamber at Northampton and East Hampton. Um, there's a lot of local right around. There's a lot of love to spread around. So please, you know. Um, my parting wish is that we continue to support local all season long. Please follow the Bauer Studio on social media. You are on Instagram, Facebook. Um, I'm missing, are you on Twitter? Not Twitter, but, uh, have a Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. but mostly Instagram, right? Mostly Instagram. And, um, and if you haven't, and if you don't want to spoil someone else, treat yourself <laughs> to one of your beautiful products. So um, have a great day. Thank you for spending your time with us. So um, thanks to Issa, to Vincent, and to Basil. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi everyone, this is Vincent from the Bauer Studio and I'm just going to walk you through some of the changes that we've done here um, on Main Street from transforming our former gift shop and apothecary into fully a production studio for our plantable seed cards as well as other illustrated gifts that we make. So our former apothecary shelves have now been transformed into all of our back stock of plantable uh, cards. So if you're ordering anything from us online, it's probably coming from one of these shelves um, where we're storing all of our cards. This helps us keep everything nice and organized. And then back here where we had formerly been um, a kind of back stock area for the gift shop, we now have this printing production area and that's Beatrice, one of our studio assistants, working really hard printing out lots and lots of cards. And most of our studio assistants uh, work here, which is where we have kind of a, a workstation where our cards can be folded and packed. We also have an area in here, which was formerly our office when the studio, when the shop was open, um, where we do all of our shipping and packing of orders. So we um, do a lot of wholesale orders. We also do retail from our website. And so if anything that you ordered from us, um, it's gone through this room to be shipped out. And then in our front room, where we had formerly our uh, main gift shop area, you know, there used to be a huge table in the front here, um, it's now pretty much just been transformed into a, an office space where we do a little bit more of our um, shipping as well as um, have our computers for um, getting in touch with folks and keeping up with our website updates. And we kind of have just like a really small break area right now in here. Um, you know, post COVID, we're hoping to be able to make this into more of a space where um, our studio assistants and everyone can kind of take a break and hang out, enjoy some lunch or something. But for now, we're keeping things um, pretty safe. Um, one of the nice things about this space is it does allow us to kind of have these doors here where we can all work separately and make sure that we're working safely together. Um, so yeah, we've basically just gone through absolutely everything and um, taken out all the gift shop stuff, taken up out all the apothecary stuff, and are now fully a studio for making our plantable seed cards.